Okay, I've always liked Honda because uh, the transmission... Okay, first of all, the transmission will not drop out of the car. I'm going to have to remove the entire uh, lower subframe assembly. It, it has the uh, both uh, lower uh, steering swing arms on it, whatever they're called. The things that attach the lower ball joint to the frame. Um, it's in the way the tranny won't drop out. So in order to get that off to start with, you have to take this splash shield off. Runs all along the front of the car, up this side, up the other side. I'm just going to show you how to get these little clips out and not break them. If you uh, gently pry on, pop that center pin out. You can see it's this style where these collapse around the center part. That's one, and they rotate in their in their spot. And there's two for this side. All the ones along the front are out. I've just got to go do the other side. Just doing this the one spot to show you. Um, along the front, there's a, there's I can count them. I think there's about seven of them. About four of mine shattered. These ones are a bit oily, so they've they've they're not brittle and falling apart. So I'm going to have to order up about 10 of these to replace all the ones that break when I put this splash shield back on. Okay, so I got the splash shield to drop down. Comes out as one piece. Just move it off to the side here. I wouldn't try spend too much effort trying to save these little things. Um, when they don't come out, your best bet is to uh, take a screwdriver or whatever, hit on the end here, and just, if it's really brittle, just break the plastic piece and push it right through, and then this piece will pop out. That's what happened to most of them on mine. So this will be in here like this with the cap on it. The cap's now broken off, you can see. With that in place, if it's not coming out, just put a screwdriver on the cap here and give it a tap with a hammer and push that piece right through. Once it's out of the way, you can pull this out backwards and get it out of the way. Okay, now I'll show you uh, this cross member that has to come off. And it's this big cross member here. It's attached with uh, just above the uh, tow hook. You can see that bolt there. Uh, same on this side, just in front of the tow hook. Here, there's a bolt here that's got to come out. I'm not sure where all the bolts are. Uh, looks like if you come around to the in by the wheel here, there's a bolt. One sec, I have to get a light. Okay, looking in from the passenger's wheel. Uh, there's that same cross member there. You can see the, uh, the uh, lower ball joint control arms attached there. And then the cross member runs down there. And over here you can see um, this one big bolt here. That will allow it to detach from the frame up here. And then there's more bolts down along the bottom. I'm hoping this torsion rod here will come out with one thing I neglected to mention before, when you're doing anything with the uh, taking the, taking the, uh, the strut, strut to the hub assembly, nuts and bolts and stuff off, don't forget there's a little electric uh, sensor that senses the, uh, anti for the anti-lock brakes. Make sure you take that off. If you let the hub assembly hang by that wire, you'll probably break it and that'll affect your anti-lock braking system. So it's a 10 millimeter bolt. Ouch. And make sure you take that off. Okay, I have it unattached now. It was on there. Now it's uh, it's quite long. Once it's unattached, it's quite long, so you'll have lots of room. Okay, now I gotta take this. I gotta and eventually take the lower ball joints off, which I didn't want to have to do, but um, apparently I'm gonna have to do that. And then I'll leave all this hub assembly attached up here, and I can drop this lower arm. So I gotta take the cotter pin out, take the nut off, and then uh, try to dislodge that, which looks like fun. Okay, I'm gonna do this part uh, just to show you how to get a lower ball joint apart without damaging it. Um, and I realized, 
for those of us who have done it before, it's not a big deal. Probably not worth putting on film, but for anybody who hasn't done it, it's uh, there's a bit of a trick to it, and you don't want to wreck the boot. You don't want to try to pry it apart in any way. You have to just pop it apart. Okay, we're back. I tried a couple of different setups. I couldn't seem to get one that uh, worked very well. I don't want to wreck that boot. And um, it's a bit tricky. So what I came up with was this, and it did work. Okay, I took this nut. This is the nut that was on here. So I put it on upside down, so I have the flat surface pointing down. And I took a jack. I jacked up on here and you'll notice as I jack up the gap between the, the, the two parts you got to separate will widen out in here. So you jack it up, be careful you're on jack stand so just take just jack it up until the weight just almost comes off the jack stand. Okay the weight is just off the jack stand so that's going any higher won't do any good. So you separated this gap as wide as it'll go then I took a nut Took a nut that would barely fit. You have to get the right size nut. This is a reinforcing section right here, this raised ridge that stiffens this member. Take the, fl the two flats of the nut, put one flat on the reinforcing part and one flat on the uh, this part. Now when you drop the jack it's going to pinch that nut in there and apply force between the two parts to pop them apart. So I'm going to slowly drop the jack Make sure the nut stays in the right position and you can see that with all the weight off the jack it's actually pushed it apart now anyway because I've already separated it but before it was separated it's they put a lot of pressure on this nut to force those two pieces apart and with that pressure on there constant like that then you take a large hammer and just bang on this portion here this will momentarily deform it and allow it to pop apart so then I just bang it like this and it, it's separated, which it is separated right now. And when I separated, the nut fell out. And that's how I did it. No damage to the boot. Uh, and it's just, it's just uh, separating ball joints is never easy. I think you, can, you may be able to buy some sort of separator that goes in the bottom here. Don't ever use forks. Uh, tie rod end forks, whatever they're called on here, you'll just destroy this boot. You can see this lower ball joint on the Honda is a pressed in part. If you rip this boot, you've got to take the whole hub assembly off, unless you've got a press in your garage. Take it into a shop, have this lower ball joint pressed out, press a new one, press back in. You don't want to get involved with that. Uh, it's a huge job. So this little system seemed to work not bad. So I've got the ball joint on this side separated. Okay, so if I was to say I was uh, unimpressed with Honda right now, that would be a fairly massive understatement. Um, it turns out this entire subframe assembly does have to come off, which is absolutely absurd. I've removed lots of transmissions in my time and never have I had to pull off a complete subframe assembly. That's a bit ridiculous. So you got six bolts. One there I've removed uh, right in by the lower control arm. Holds the lower one end of the lower control arm. The other end of the lower control arm stays attached across the front of the car right behind this towing hook is a two okay other side of the car behind the other towing hook is three of course you got behind this control arm on the driver's side the same one comes out right in there you can see it right there and then at the back you have these long bolts that come out here so where the torsion torsion bar attaches there was one long bolt right here same on the other side that's five and six 
to be aware of the oxygen sensor wire attaches to the front of this subframe assembly and you'll have to remove that or you'll rip it off and that is right there's the oxygen sensor that bolt's gonna have to come out and over here it's also follow the wire across you can see it's also clipped right here so the clip can come off or it can come out of the clip and the clip stays behind I'll take this bolt out and then the wire it looks like the subframe assembly will be free it's gonna take this uh, engine mounting bracket with it which in my case is totally shot anyway so I'll have to, I'm gonna buy another one um, so it's a good thing I did both sides of that the tranny side and the engine side after all um, I didn't undo the ball joint on the on the passenger on the driver's side because I'm gonna let it hopefully hang there um, the other glitch is it looks like to drop that subframe assembly the exhaust pipe is going to be in the way but I'm gonna find out in a minute and if so I'll have to pull the exhaust system off way to go Honda awesome okay we can see the subframe is now loose it was up there now it's down here I would support it at the back by a jack because I wasn't sure how heavy this thing was going to be. So I'm going to lower the rear jack now. Just double check and make sure nothing's going to hang up here. See how far down it comes out. There's that O2 wire and there's the clip. Just do a quick check before you lower it any further. Make sure it's not going to rip anything off. I'll let you know if I find out if there's anything in the way or not. Okay, I dropped the subframe down, and on this corner, I actually supported it with some, but not quite. It's still on the jack at the very back. I have the jack at the back attached, or jacking on. There's two, uh, or two bolts go through for the transmission uh, uh, mounting support bracket. Um, it's putting a lot of strain on the exhaust, which is in turn pulling down on the engine, because I haven't attempted to take that apart. Those bolts can be a bugger. I could have tried it. That's one less thing to do. Uh, so it's resting on the lower ball joint, the jack at the back, and then this piece of wood, these pieces of wood, it can only drop any far another eighth, well, a quarter of an inch or so, and, and then it'll bottom up. Okay, so that seems to have worked, and what I have now is a hole, you can see. Okay, the transmission is there. There's a transmission. There's quite a large hole here. Uh, I think I can get it through that, uh, hopefully. And uh, it's it's basically just barely resting on the, it's still swinging on the cable from up top. So I'll let it down a bit more and we'll see if we can wiggle it out through that hole without taking this entire subframe member off. That subframe member has moved quite a bit. This is a really bad way to do it. Well, it's the only way to do it, but it's a bad design. Okay. Okay, there it is. It actually came out of that hole really easily. It took me all of about 30 seconds. Um, one of the feature, one of the things that helped get it out is the fact that uh, this subframe assembly moves around so you can move it back because it's only attached by the ball, lower ball joint on the other side. Uh, and it's just rubbing along the muffler as you move it back and forth. And then it's still on my jack and these pieces of wood. I'm going to just uh, jack it back up to take the stress off the engine oil pan right now. And there's the tranny. And it looks like it's due for an overhaul anyway. Time for a new input shaft bearing, input shaft seal. This output axle seal has been leaking. Going to do the clutch, uh, machine the, uh, the pressure plate, pilot bearing, all that stuff. While it's out, this is the job you don't want to do twice. Everything you can think of, every seal, every everything, clutch included, whatever needs to be done, do it now. Even lower ball joints, actually, if uh, they look even the slightest bit suspect, get them done now. Okay, talk to you in a bit. Bye. 
Okay, so here's the tranny. I'm going to do a little bit of disassembly before lunch, not a lot. So you make sure it's in, in uh, neutral, and if it's not in neutral, you won't be able to lift this up and down. So, you see it's stuck there, so neutral is here, so I can go up or down. If it was any other spot, I couldn't. Even if it's in some other gear. So I'm going to take off... Uh... Okay, there's four. Now this should... Oops. Should come out. Might have to tap it with something just to break it free. There it goes. I don't suppose any point in trying to save this gasket. Okay, that comes right out. Set that to the side. Okay, so and there's a little bit of gasket. Oh, it probably isn't a gasket. It's probably RTV. I bet you that's what it is. Okay, next we have these two detent bolts. Whoops, that was great. Good job. Okay, so the washer came off. The uh, spring is inside of here. See the spring. And I think the ball, yeah, the ball is still sitting there. A little more careful on this one. There's the spring. There's the washer. I don't know how long those springs are supposed to be, but mine are recessed into the uh, inside of the thing. If that's normal, I don't know. So, uh, magnetic screwdriver will just pop these balls out. Magnetic. There's the ball, the other ball. Both balls and springs are out. Now I'm going to loosen all the, uh, take this off again. By the way, when I pull this off before it, be aware there's a uh, aluminum washer that you'll need to not lose and make sure it goes back where it belongs. Okay, I loosened all the bolts. Looks like there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 14 of them. Around the outside, the two detent springs are out. Uh, the shifter thing is off. It's in neutral. And the uh, this comes out. This was in here. It's just a half inch drive. Spray it first. Take it out. Work it back and forth if you have to. Down inside of here, you will see snap ring. You got to pry it apart. Right now, before you do anything else, then you'll hear it uh, drop free. So I'm going to do that. Right. Okay, I switched to a pair of actual needle nose, uh, pardon me, uh, snap ring pliers to get this uh, top piece out. I, s I failed on the whole needle nose thing. Those are actual snap ring pliers. So I had to pry with those snap ring pliers and pop the case loose at the same time otherwise nothing seemed to drop like they claim there it goes it is loose okay there's my cover so this piece should go right in okay so that piece goes right in there like so you can take it out. Well, just do whatever. When these three forks are lined up like this, that's neutral. So right now it's in neutral. So I should be able to grab this whole cluster and pull it out once I remove this reverse idler and reverse gear here. Okay, both nuts are our both bolts are loose. That just comes out. That ball is captive. There's a little ball there that's obviously captive. That goes there. Reverse gear comes out. That uh, goes with the long heavy part down. Okay, the gear cluster chunk should all come out. Let's try it. Are we still in neutral? We're in neutral. Grab this and grab this. And it lifts out with the output shaft or input shaft. Um, I will set it like so. 
Okay, there's the gear cluster out. Um, it wants to fall apart, so if you want to set it like this, it doesn't want to fall apart this way with the big heavy one resting on the bottom one. This piece goes in here. It won't sit there either. It wants to keep falling off, but it only goes one way. The brass has notches. You can see where it's missing some teeth there. There's three of those spots around. Just turn it till it fits. Let it set off. When you put it back together, it's important to get these tabs right. We'll talk about that later. Before I forget, there's two washers here. There's a kind of a Belleville washer going down and then another washer going up. Don't mix those. Don't get them wrong. As a matter of fact, I'm going to... So this, this flimsier Belleville washer goes on first. This other flat washer goes on second. That's how they were. Remember, I'll set it down like that for right now. I'm going to turn this over to see if I can drop this differential out. There it goes. It's pretty heavy. Okay, there's the differential. It just came out. Put it to the side. Goes like that. Okay, now the important thing I was pointing about magnetic piece that collects all the junk is sitting right here and uh, this is full of shavings I don't know how deep they are if I dig in there let's have a look ah uh, it's well it's fairly fine stuff I don't see any really big chunks but there's lots of it there it's more or less a, a, a wet oily powder I don't see any big chunks so hopefully that's all that's a good thing Okay, turning off. Okay, just seeing which is, uh, that pulls up or down for a second. That's first and second. That's third, fourth. That's reverse fifth. That's third, fourth. 